So one of the issues that I see with people who have perhaps uh, high openness to experience but yet low extroversion is that they have uh, a wide variety of mental models that they sample but yet do not actually go out and expose to a process of refutation in reality. Uh, so they just keep them sort of in, in, a, in a play sandbox in their minds in which they think, oh, well, I'm accumulating all these general thinking concepts that are that are improving my fitness. So they, they feel like it's improving their fitness in terms of adaptability because uh, it feels that way. It feels like if you can see things from all different perspectives, uh, you will eventually just become like very rational and very uh, capable. And it's really a trap in the sense that you are only actually applying a single mental model, which is pretty maladaptive, which is the one that's overarching over these. And that mental model is saying, sample all of these without exposing yourself. That in itself is just a mental model. Um, and once that mental model gets exposed to reality, all of this is swept away. And you have to act with another uh, mental model that just gets developed in the moment, whatever backup mental model you had. So we're always applying these to, to our, um, to our environment or our environment is, you could look at it either way. Your environment is, uh, deciding what mental model you become, or you could view it as you are putting yourself in the environment that you choose through the, the mental model that you are embodying at any given moment. It's ultimately the same thing, right? The The problem of universal priors is actually just a problem of getting outside of your room because it, it's absurd to think that you could apply a sort of engineering or systems mentality to discovering the map that actually corresponds to the territory. You wouldn't be able to do that because by definition, the map is just a tiny subsection of what is the territory. And the only paradox that I find in this entire structure is that under eternalism, it, pretty much everything is sampled. So you start here, right? And then all physical configurations are sampled like this, right? And then there's a barrier. There's a barrier, which is the process of refutation by, the, by reality itself. It's like if you jump out of a window and you don't believe that the acceleration due to gravity here on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared, you bust your head open, right? So only one of these survives the one that doesn't contain uh, the false beliefs, the false or useless um, thinking concepts and, and ways of behaving, uh, the, the inappropriate mental models. But yet the other mental models still exist. So from an eternalist perspective, what's really going on it is kind of my question is it, it ultimately just becomes a matter of densities it becomes a matter of which ones survive more and and therefore sort of contain more a reality fluid so to speak and you're always going to find yourself in that which survives yet yet the very belief of thinking that you will always survive is maladaptive so i think that that's how reality manages to um, avoid local maxima avoid stasis is by making that belief itself maladaptive in, in this intrinsic sense.